We're going to have to check amperage and volts together at the same time. Set it to kilowatts. And I measure the voltage on the load side of the contactor on the outdoor unit. We would take our compressor common winding and our voltage on the top of the contactor here. Checking capacitors under load using the power factor feature of the meter in order to determine whether the capacitor is within um, the, its rated capacitance or not. This has come in handy a lot for me, especially because there are certain manufacturers out there who have manufactured uh, fan coil systems with the capacitor for the blower motor mounted on the blower assembly all the way tucked back into the back of the cabinet. And the only way you can get to it is to take the blower assembly out of the, the cabinet itself. It's a pain in the butt. It adds extra time to maintenances. So this has actually been a, a pretty interesting and valid measurement to take and it's been very helpful. And I want to just real quick go through how to get to the power factor feature on the meter. We go to page 24 here in the user manual. This user manual is located on truetechtools.com. If you search the IDVM 550, you will see in the resources section of their website, the online PDF version of the user manual. They don't have a print version that comes with the meter. You can of course print this out anytime you want, but it's always here available online to you um, at truetechtools.com. So here at page 24, we've got power phase and power factor. They do a really great job explaining the power triangle, which is depicted here. This power triangle here is depicted as an inductive load. If this were a capacitive load, we'd see an inverse triangle with the real power on the top, the apparent power as the hypotenuse and the reactive power over here. So here we are going to be looking at inductive loads because we're looking at an inductive motor, um, i.e. condenser fan motors. So the apparent power here, which is measured as VA with volts, amps, real power in watts, and reactive power, volts, amps, reactive. And then of course we have power factor, which is, uh, this is notated as theta, but on the meter it's notated as cosine theta. Essentially what we're looking at is as a, with an inductive load, they have to, they require a magnetic field. And in order to generate the magnetic field, you have to use reactive power. As reactive power increases, the apparent power becomes further away from the real power. So you can see that as the power factor decreases, the gap between apparent power and real power also increases. So power factor decreases, the gap between apparent power and real power increases. Apparent power is simply the amount of available power. Real power is the amount of energy that is actually doing work. Reactive power is a part of this equation, but it's not doing any work. It's just creating the magnetic field. So what happens with an inductive load, i.e. condenser fan motors, it's going to be using more utility power to use reactive power to generate that magnetic field. And it's going to become extremely inefficient. It's going to heat up very quickly. And we need a way to use less reactive power from the utility. That's when capacitors come into play. We're going to decrease the reactive power that is needed from the utility supply power, thereby increasing the power factor, making this gap smaller. The, the apparent power and real power will become closer and we're essentially trying to get a unity power factor, a cosine theta fa power factor of one. We're still going to have reactive power, um, so it's not going to be a true one. Uh, if we had zero reactive power, we would have a resistive load, um, and then which in which case the apparent power and real power would be the same. But with an inductive load, we have to have that magnetic field. So that's what the capacitor is doing. It is considered a reactive power generator when tied into a circuit. So what it is going to do, it, rather than the inductive load itself trying to draw all of the current from the utility to generate the reactive power, the capacitor itself is going to provide that reactive power, thereby allowing the amount of real work done to increase. So we look here on page 26, power phase and power factor. This is the actual t making of the measurement. So if you put your meter, the IDVM to kilowatts, you're going to see this screen here. The top of the display will be kilowatts. The bottom left is voltage. Bottom right is amps, current. Up here we see lag or lead. So in an inductive load, the current is lagging behind the voltage. If you were, if you looked at it um, on a graph, in a capacitive load, you would see lead here because the current is leading the the wave of the voltage. 
uh, in 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 essence the uh, the peak of the sine wave for an inductive load. Here we're looking. If you press function once, you're going to be looking at the kilovolt amps, the apparent power, just volts times amps. And that's what you're looking at: the apparent power, the amount of power that is available. This is the real power, the amount of power that's doing the work. If you press function twice, you're going to see cosine theta, which is power factor here. Lag, it's indicating that you're measuring power factor on an inductive load. And this is your reactive power measurement down here on the bottom left. This is your volt amps reactive. And up here is your power factor. You want a power factor on an inductive load with a capacitor attached to it. Like I said, we're trying to obtain a power factor of unity, one, if I saw 0.869 or 0.87, I would be looking at probably a weak capacitor. Maybe that capacitor is visually just blown up. We would be seeing higher amperage on the common winding of the inductive motor itself. And of course, we have this lower power factor. We would need to be taking a look at this uh, capacitor a little bit more closely. Maybe take it out of the circuit, do a bench test, or do the capacitance calculation that we're, that we're all used to, maybe in the HVAC school app. Click the function key one more time, we can actually measure phase. Negative is inductive load. Of course, you would also be notated by lag. Positive, without the negative sign here, you would have a capacitive load. And that's pretty much it. Um, the only other thing that I would say is mostly just a caveat. You can see here in the picture the way that they're measuring the current on this particular wire here. These redfish meter clamps are, they can be sometimes sensitive. You wanna make sure that you're making a good measurement. You wanna be away from bundles of wires. You wanna make sure that the wire that you're actually measuring is in the center of the clamp, not off to the sides resting on the clamp itself because it can alter the accuracy of the measurement. You want to make sure that the wire that you're measuring is in the center of the clamp and that the rest of the clamp and the wire you're measuring is away from bundles of wires for maximum accuracy. Otherwise, let's go outside and let's take a look at how we measure this on a system that is running. All right, so we got the IDVM 550 meter here. Um, we're going to switch it to kilowatts. You can see here, this is where we would be measuring um, real power with the kilowatts up here on the top display, volts, and then amps. We hit the function key once. See, this is where we would be um, measuring apparent power. Twice, we got power factor. Power factor would be displayed up here at the top. Kilovolt amps reactive down here at the bottom. Hit it one more time, and we can measure phase. Remember, um, positive, negative, you could be measuring inductive or reactive loads, volts and amps. Hit it one more time, you can go back to real power or active power. Let's go, let's go outside and measure it. And I did also wanna show, um, show you guys how to use the HVAC School app. You go to tools, you look up at the top, under load capacitor test, and you just put in, you input your readings, voltage across the capacitor, which is your start and um, common on the capacitor, your amperage uh, on the start winding, and then what the capacitor is rated for in microfarads. We're gonna check volts across. We've got 343 across the fan start winding and the run winding of the fan. Make sure we got here. 340, or sorry, 320, it's looking like 343. And if I switch to amps, we got 0 0.6566. We'll input in here, and it's rated for five. You can see our calculated microfarads and the amount of variation is acceptable. This is matching the uh, power factor test that we just did. All right, so we're going to test this uh, under load. We've got our compressor common winding and our condenser fan motor common winding. And remember, we're gonna have to check amperage and volts together at the same time. Set it to kilowatts. And I measure the voltage on the load side of the contactor on the outdoor unit. We would take our compressor common winding and our voltage on the top of the contactor here we're getting a power factor of about the same, 0.97. Now, if I were to see this uh, any lower than 0.94, I would say let's go ahead and replace this capacitor because it's probably, um, it's probably weak. 
and I would bench test and use the, you can also use the HVAC school app to test it under load using the capacitance calculation. So there you are. That is checking the capacitor under load using the IDVM 550. We're gonna use the Subco TechLink app and we are going, that comes in conjunction with the IDVM 550 Subco power quality meter. Um, you can use it for um, the 510, um, I believe, model meters that come from the Redfish instruments or the Subco instruments. You can go to your toolbox. You would simply just press add tool. It would scan, you would come up, you would just hit uh, save, and then you can connect or disconnect the meter. So we're gonna connect our, ours back together. Real quick, going into tests, you can see they have a lot of quick tests that you can do um, very easily. Capacitor, check under load, single or dual run. You can also do your, um, your standard bench tests here, all while Bluetooth connected to your meter. You got some guided tests, uh, capacitor bench tests, current imbalance, fuse check, voltage input tests. We're, real quick, we're gonna use the Subco TechLink app to check the power factor on our compressor. This way we're going to indirectly, um, by way of power factor, determine the quality of our capacitor as of right now in real time. So you can see right now we're, we're pulling about um, 1.85 uh, kilowatts, a 245 load voltage, 7.73 amps. Um, the current being drawn by that particular motor, the compressor. And we got a power factor of 0.98. That's a pretty darn good uh, power factor. I think I was measuring 0.7 uh, a, little, uh, a little while ago. So we got 0.98. Remember, we're trying to obtain a power factor of unity in conjunction with the capacitor being uh, applied to the circuit. So I can confidently say that this capacitor is doing its job because we are just under a unity power factor. Now, if I wanted to check the fan side, I now have my amp uh, clamp on the fan common winding. We're pulling about point, just under 0.2 kilowatts. And we've still got just about a unity power factor. We can confidently say that this, uh, this capacitor is okay. And this is just another way to, to measure it using the uh, manufacturer supplied Subco TechLink app. It's a fantastic app. You can use it to record your readings. You can see the timeline here, the line graph. You can expand this so that you're, you're not longer seeing the gauge. If I were in a test, say for example, the capacitor under load test, I would finish the test, I would hit complete, and then all of my tests would be located in the results tab. It's very similar to the layout that we have in MeasureQuick. Um, Jim Bergman has designed a fantastic app in that as well. So there you go. That is using the Subco TechLink app as well in conjunction with the IDVM 550 power quality meter.